certain Welcome to another episode of I Am The Change Podcast, brought to you by Dreams and Reality Incorporated, a nonprofit organization geared towards uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. I am your host, Michael Davis, alongside Mr. Jason Redman and Mr. Reese Lovett. How are y'all doing today? Great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, doing lovely, man. Doing lovely. Look, I got a young man on the show today. Uh, he's a... I can't say I know this man personally because uh, this, this he's a little younger than I am, but he's a friend of my daughter's. And so she said, hey, you got to get him on the show. He's doing some big things. And we share the same birthday. So when I found that out, I'm like, yo, got to get him on the show. Got to get him on the show. <laughs> the only so criteria. Look, hey, man, that's, that, that was that was it right there for me. So Josh Hall, uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. NBA basketball player. Did I say it right, Josh? Yes, sir. You did. You did. All right. Josh, four. You played a three or the four? Uh, I played the third. So, mm-hmm. power forward, right? Small, Small forward. forward. Small forward. Oh, my bad. I, I'm not a basketball fan, so forgive me. Small <laughs> forward <laughs> from Durham, North Carolina, right? Yes, sir. Tell me, tell the people now what I want to hear from you, Josh. Because I, I mean, I've, I've seen you come by my house, my, my daughter and all your friends, y'all would come by the house and uh, do all the stuff that y'all do. Tell me what it was like. Uh, but first, tell, tell the people like who you are, where you're from, and how you got to be where you are today. All right. Uh, I'm Josh Hall, as you said. Uh, I'm from Durham, North Carolina. Uh, I went to Southern Durham my freshman year. And then after my freshman year, uh, my mom, she's a lawyer, so... Uh, academics, like, they run high. Uh, my dad, he played college basketball at ECU, ECU uh, East Carolina. Um, he's seven foot. Uh, that's where I got my height from. Uh, so, you know, my mom, she ran, like, the academics uh, portion of my life. Uh, my dad, he ran, you know, the athletics. Um, so it was always a good balance there. Uh, they both kept my head on straight in both of those areas. Um, and... Like I said, my mom, she was a lawyer, so like she'd always tell me uh, to conduct myself in a way, you know, that rep- represents her and like, you know, the best way. Uh, whether that's, you know, going to the mall, uh, realizing that there's cameras around. Uh, so can't really be doing like silly stuff. Um, and, you know, like as a little kid leaving the house, I always used to hear that. Uh, and then, you know, got to the point where it's like, all right, mama, like, I know. Uh, but, like, I look back on it, uh, and, you know, I realize why she, why she said some of those things, uh, especially now uh, because I'm in the NBA. And, like, there's a, you know, like, people look out for that stuff, uh, like, with social media and things of that sort. Uh, they look for people to react a certain way uh, so they can, you know, go viral or whatever the case may be. Uh, so, you know, those mores in that standard, uh, that really helped me out. Um but after my ninth grade year, I left Durham, North Carolina. Uh, I went to a prep, like a, a boarding school <coughs> in Virginia uh, called Oak Hill Academy. Uh, that's where all the top high school basketball players go. Um, unfortunately, it didn't really work out. I played on the B team. Uh, and my mom, you know, she was paying tuition. Uh, and, like, when I would come home, like, after breaks and things of that sort, uh, when I got the chance to go home, I could see it was breaking her. Uh, because, like, sometimes, like, you know, like, I come down the stairs and she'd be on the couch crying, like, son, I don't know if you can go back to school. Uh, and she just knew how much it meant for me. Uh, but, like, I'm a I'm a family person. So, you know, me um, being – I was young. I think I was, like, 16, 17. Uh, but, like, I, I never want to see my mama, you know, crying, uh, you know, trying to break her back. Uh, and giving up things, uh, you know, for the satisfaction of me, uh, especially if I'm not happy and she's not happy. Um, so, you know, I told her, like, I feel like it was best for me to move on from that situation. Uh, and she supported me. Uh, and then I went to a prep school. Uh, I did good. Picked up a lot of uh, college offers, uh, and interest for basketball. I committed to North Carolina State um, during the the pandemic year, um, you know, and during that whole stretch, I met like an agent. Um, and you know, he was like, he he thought it would be best for me to, 
you know, put my name into the NBA draft uh, at that time, especially then with, like, at, at the beginning of the pandemic, they were talking about, like, they didn't even think it would be a college basketball season. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, basically, yeah. so basically, so uh, basically, it would have been just like a, a waste, a waste of year. Uh, everything was pretty much closed down in the sense of, like, uh, college. So, I couldn't really get into gyms like the YMCA, uh, you know, gyms that I go go to like when I was back home at Durham. Mm-hmm. Uh but like my agent, uh he he had his own gym uh in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he had two other guys who played college basketball who, you know, had signed with him. <clears throat> uh so I went there for like three weeks. Uh and the biggest thing for me like during that whole process was I wanted to see how much weight I could gain. Uh I think when I left when I left my final year of high school, I was like 180 pounds uh, throughout that uh, three-week span. I was constantly gaining weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I, at one point, like, I was, like, 200 pounds. Uh, and, like, you know, it was putting on weight, like, the right way. Uh, so I said, why not? Um, and, you know, it got me here. You dig it. Dig it. So – when you um, went from Southern to Oak Hill, how was that transition knowing you were going to the school that produced great basketball players? And even though you said that you didn't stay, like how was that transition from Southern Durham <laughs> High School to this, you know, nationally known uh, school? Right. Um, the transition was definitely different because uh, – Oak Hill, it's not like a place like, you know, uh, it's not like a city at all. Um, it's the country. Uh, and I think, like, the closest known food food place, like, near uh, was, like, McDonald's. And that's, like, 30, 40 minutes away. Um, oh, wow. So, you know, getting used to that, uh, being isolated, uh, you know, and when I first got there, um, like, I stayed in, like, regular dorms because, like, we were uh, – we were like doing like our uh, tryouts for like the team or whatever um, for the uh, B team that I was gonna be on, um, and like it's pretty much like a like a reform school like you know like they seeing kids like you know uh, who they feel like need to get to act together uh, you know they seeing them there, um, so I was standing in the dorm with them. Uh, now granted, like I mean the dorm was okay, but like you know we didn't have a cell phone. Uh, for like a long period of time, I think we got our cell phones like every three every three weeks on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know it was kind of tough. Like um, when I was back home going to Southern, like if if I had a bad day at school, you know I could come home, hug my mama, uh, you know play the game with my dad. Uh, but there, you know, like if I really wanted to talk to my parents, like I had to email them. Um, wow. and you know, the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi was shut off at nine o'clock. Uh, oh, yeah. so <laughs> if I, if I want to talk to my parents, like it would have to be, you know, uh, after school and it really wouldn't be a long talk because, uh, I have to do my, uh, tryouts for the team. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and I was 15, so really I feel like that's that's like the blessing um of it all uh, i didn't really have to you know rely on my parents um to get things done for me uh, i really pretty much had to like figure it out on my own buckle down um and it's just like going to college early uh except for the fact you know like college is there like in an open space um but like as far as like school work uh i could pick and choose when i wanted to do my school work um so you know, I didn't have my mama to be like, hey, son, go to the kitchen table, finish your homework and don't get up until it's done. Uh, if I really wanted to slack off in school, like, you know, I had the opportunity to do so. Um, but I knew what I wanted for my life. Uh, so, yeah, that definitely helped me, you know, uh, become more independent as a person. That's good. Dig it. Dig it. So question. Um, like you, I, you said you were I committed to NC State. Um, was it an easy decision because of the COVID, like not actually going through with it and, you know what I'm saying, throwing your name in the draft pool, or was college something you were looking forward to? 
Um, it definitely wasn't an easy decision. Uh, you know, I sat down with my dad uh, even before, like, I committed to NC State. Uh, me and my dad, like I said, you know, he runs the athletics. Uh, he wanted me to be in the best situation uh, possible uh, because the NBA has always been my dream. Uh, and he wanted me to be in a position where, you know, that, that dream could be achievable, uh, especially in a in a, in a tight window, like a short time span. Um, so, you know, like, and the reason why I picked North Carolina State is because um, there were so many good players coming out of North Carolina, like for high school basketball, and I either played against them or played with them. So, you know, I knew it would be easy to, like, recruit players to come play with me. Um, and I think we had, like, it was four – it was five of us uh, from North Carolina who ended up actually committing to North Carolina State. So, you know, uh, just being able to go in and potentially play with my friends, um, you know, but, like, at the end of the, the, end of the day, uh, I feel like, you know, the NBA was best for me. Dig it. Dig it. So, Josh, um, so my question is, so my daughter came home and told us, hey, Dad, Mom, you got you to go watch the draft. Josh going to get drafted tonight. So sitting there, we're watching the draft. And I'm, again, I'm going to be honest, I am not a basketball fan. But, you know, so this is why I uh, – watching the draft, we go through the whole thing. You don't get drafted that night. Right. So when you don't get drafted, she, you know, you know, we're all like, oh, man, Josh didn't get drafted. Is there another round? No. Oh, man. She comes back in the house. She tells you got picked up as a free agent to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Tell me what it's like to be walking the same hallways where you know greats have played in that arena, like James Harden, KD, Russell Westbrook. What does that do for your mental state to come in and play a young fella from Durham, North Carolina, who said at, at some point in his life, I want to go to the NBA, and now you're here? What is, what is that like for you? Um, really, uh, like you said, uh, I didn't get drafted. Um, and I think like the night of the, like the, that night, uh, it was like pick 53, uh, and they called me, uh, and because they had, they had traded, they had traded that pick, mm -hmm. uh, they traded it away. Um, and you know, they called me and they were like, uh, they want to sign me. Um, and you know, I was I wasn't really like anticipating me getting drafted at all, uh, especially being that I'm from high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it wasn't really like a lot of game film on me. Um, and on top of that, like the draft process, it was very long. Uh I think it was like eight months, so it was the longest draft process ever. Um, and we didn't and we didn't even have like the the draft combine or anything like that. Uh <clears throat> So, you know, I was definitely grateful that they called me. Uh, and, yeah, I got I was able to, you know, get that deal done. Uh, but, um, like, just walking through and, like, looking up and, like, seeing the tradition uh, that, you know, like former players and current players have here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Oklahoma, it's, it's small, uh, but, like, the city is, like, it's like a like a loving city. Um, I don't know if you you all heard of like the Oklahoma massacre. Like uh, it was like a bombing. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, and they took us to the to the like museum of it all, uh, and they let us walk through when we first got here. Um, and just to see like the trauma and all the damage that was done throughout that. Um, and you know just to like walk around. Uh, and like everybody I see, like they smile. Uh, they're like, "Hey, you just how you play for the Thunder," uh, and like they embrace me uh, as if like they know me all my life. Uh, you know, that's definitely that's definitely big time, especially for me. Like coming from high school, I'm I'm not used to this. Um, but like uh, when I first got here, the general manager he sat down with me. Uh, and he just told me to like look around uh, the practice facility. And he was just explaining to me, like you said, like James Harden, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, uh, and multiple others 
like they come through. Uh, they used to practice on these same courts, uh, shoot on these same courts, uh, whether it was practice or after hours. Um, and, you know, he just expressed to me to never take the moment for granted. Um, and, you know, I feel like that's, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty big time, especially since it's Oklahoma. Uh, I don't know what the market is out here, but I wouldn't imagine like that it's like very big and like, you know, you don't see like a lot of big name free agents coming through here and like, hey, I want to, you know, play for this team. Uh, they want to go to like L.A. and other markets like that. <clears throat> uh, so for, you know, those names to be mentioned with this organization, uh, an organization started like 2000, uh, like 2009. So uh, it's a first organization uh, as far as like NBA standards. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty big. So, to back up just a little bit, when you got that call, because you seem to be very humble, <laughs> what was your what was your reaction? I as I've watched drafts and when you know people are sitting at home or at the um, venue where the draft is happening and they're, like they're really excited. Like, what was your reaction when you got that phone call? Uh, like I like I said, uh, I I didn't expect to be drafted. So you know whatever. Like whatever came with it, um, you know, I was accepting it full fledged. Uh, I mean, my agent, he was like, certain teams they would have drafted me, but like, I would have like had to go overseas and play for like a year, uh, and then come back to the states. And I really didn't, I really didn't want to do that. Um, uh, I wanted to, you know, develop like in the organization, you know. Um, <clears throat> so. You know, I told him to take that off off the table, uh, and like you know, we'll deal with, we'll deal with the rest uh, when that time is coming. Uh, and after I got the call, uh, I really didn't know like how to feel. Um, you know, I see some people that cry, uh, you know, <laughs> and like all this other stuff. Uh, but I think like it really hit me that like I was in the NBA like after the season. Um, like going back home to Durham, North Carolina, uh, you know, just seeing the impact that I have or like, you know, I know a lot of basketball players, they don't really check their DMs or like anything like that. Uh, but I try to do that uh, because I know it's a little kid out there who is just like me, who's reaching out, uh, you know, just just uh, showing love. Uh, and, you know, I want to let them know that, you know, uh, if I can do it, you can do it too. Mm -hmm. uh, especially coming from where I come from, uh, and most of the kids they look just like me, um, <clears throat> and it took that one. It took that one person for me, uh, Harry Giles. Uh, he he's in the NBA currently. He was like the number one ranked uh, high school basketball player. Uh, he basically took me under his wing, uh, so I know what that can do for a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, just like teaching him the ins ins and outs, uh, you know. And, like, having faith in a kid, uh, that can help a lot. So, you know, but, like, everybody else around me, you know, they they, they, they just loved it. Uh, loved the fact that, you know, I was in the NBA. Uh, you know, they asked me how it is. Uh, it's just it's, – I feel like it's the best job in the world, really. Mm. I gotta, so I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to have my son reach out to you. I'm going to say he okay. said that he checks his DM. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I got a, I got a two-part question for you. First part, how is it adjusting, you know what I'm saying, to the skill level? Because I mean, I know, I know you're nice and I know you played against some great players, but like everybody isn't on that level or on your level. So how was it adjusting to that NBA talent, you know what I'm saying, and falling in um with the spot? Oh, uh, it was definitely it was definitely different. Um but like as far as like skill level and things of that sort, I really didn't like have a like problem with that it was more so like learning the terminology uh <clears throat> like of like play calls and like you know like um defensive sets and things of that sort uh and you know where to catch the ball and shoot from uh because it's like in high school you can uh like shoot the ball from mid-range uh you can basically take like any shots you want to uh in the nba uh, it's like analytics. Uh, so, you know, like they point out like which shot is the most efficient, uh, which shot isn't efficient. So, you know, just learning uh, 
where I can pick my spots from and like shoot at. Uh, and like that gives me the best opportunity to score. So uh, as far as like skill wise, like, you know, I feel like I was like up to par, uh, but it's just like little tricks and things of that sort that, you know, people who've been in the NBA longer, they know uh, and they just pass down to you. Uh, so yeah, that was that was like really the hardest part of like adjusting. Okay, okay. So second part. So when that season high, you dropped twenty five on uh, the Clippers, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Ten rebounds, two assists. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Well, how was you feeling that game, man? Because you, y'all, y'all was watching that game. You just took off on the boys, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I felt. I mean, I felt good. Uh, during that game. Um, this t- this organization is big on you know, like getting their younger players to develop. Uh, and like I feel like that was like the last game, so you know, like that was the perfect time to you know showcase what I could do, especially being that you know during the season, during the cur- course of the season, I was dealing with like nagging injuries, uh, you know, like tendonitis, uh, and all 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 kinds of crazy things that I never really had to deal with. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I really, uh, like, soaked it all in after that game, um, you know, and, like, it was a big confidence boost uh, for me. I'm sure. So, so, so Josh, my question, you, man. Oh, uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's my turn. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's your turn. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Josh, my, my, my question is, at what time did you, at what point in your life did you realize you were good at basketball. Like everybody know, everybody feels like they're the greatest. But when did you realize that you were pretty doggone good? Uh, it kind of, it came kind of late, uh, for me. Um, <clears throat> because I'm a, I was a late bloomer. Uh, when I was, I think I hit like a growth spurt while I was at Oak Hill. Uh, when I first, when I first left to go to Oak Hill, I think I was like six, like six two. Uh, and like when I was growing, I didn't really have like, like I said, I didn't have like injuries or like people uh, experience like tendonitis and things of that sort. Uh, but like, I never really experienced that. So, you know, I just put my regular uniform clothes on and, you know, going about my day. And then one day a uh, teacher was like, um, because like when we, when we first got there, like they had the measures for our uniform and our pants and things like that. Uh, and a teacher looked at me and was like, uh, you need, like, you need some more pants. Like, you wearing high waters right now or whatever. Uh, and that's how I kind of knew, like, I was, like, I grew. Um, but, yeah, once I, once I started to grow, uh, I really just pieced everything together. Uh, and then I think I got an offer from Kansas. I got, yeah, I got an offer from uh, Kansas and, you know, can't produce like NBA players. Uh, so you know, I was like, okay, I, I guess I got something here. Uh, and you know, I just kept on working. Because you had an offer from Texas too, right? I did. Yeah, I was really mad you didn't go to Texas, man. I was like, <laughs> how you pick North Carolina or Texas? But you told me that North Carolina, North Carolina State produces a lot of good big men. Is that what you? Ain't that what you told me? Yeah. I don't think I told you that. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So were you playing like have you always played a three position? Or is that the position that you had to play once you got into the NBA? Like were you always a three? Uh yes, ma'am. Uh when I was when I was um Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> my man, uh, when, I got man. I know he does. <laughs> yeah. uh, when I was in fifth grade, like I played, I played like uh, center because like I was like the tallest player. Uh, right. But like I said, my dad he was seven one. I mean, well he is seven one. So, um, back in the day, like they were like more traditional bigs. Uh, mm-hmm. where like the only time they really catch the ball is it, they got the rebound. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in the post. Uh, so growing up, my dad always emphasized um, getting a rebound and being able to dribble the ball and make decisions for myself. Uh, and it just so happens that, you know, he was doing this before, like, the game evolved uh, to where you see, like, six, eight, six, nine point guards, things of that sort. Uh, so 
he always had like guard skills. Uh, and in high school, I played the two and the three, uh, and that's pretty much like what I play now. Hmm. So, do you think that versatility with your height helped you position yourself to where you are? Uh, definitely. Um, <clears throat> because like it, like the end all goal is to become like a player where, you know, you can't really put me in a place and be like, hey, play this position. Uh, like, I just want to be a player where, you know, I can just go out there and make things happen, uh, no matter, like, what I'm doing or what position I'm playing. Uh, and, yeah, that's that's basically where the game is going now. Those are the players who, you know, you see uh, getting the most recognition, uh, like Giannis uh, and Tukumbo, he recently won the NBA championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's basically a 6'11 point guard who can really – pretty much do everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. man. So, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. I, I got, I got I mine. Go ahead. Mean, I definitely see that talent in you because, like, yeah, you, like, you know what I'm saying? You got an all-around game, especially, especially that last game when you put up the numbers. It was like, like I was like, Dang, yeah, he got a bright future in the NBA for sure. And I didn't realize I was going to be on the podcast with you when I saw the game. So, you know, <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, I got a question, man. So when I watch when, you, when I watch you come by the house and I watch whenever I watch basketball, which is not to the finals or, or to the playoffs, the one player that I always thought that you that you reminded me of was KD, because like because you're, you're tall, right. you're slender, and you got long arms. So who do you think you pattern your game after the most? Uh when I was in high school, I got that comparison all the time. Uh so this ain't the first time that I heard it. Um, okay. But, yeah, like, definitely uh, my favorite player, my favorite players all the time are uh, Penny Hardaway and uh, Trace McGrady. Okay. Uh, Penny Hardaway because he was a six, seven uh, point guard. He pretty much, like, played with, like, a swagger about him. Like, mm-hmm. it was, like, contagious. Um, And then Trace McGrady, he was just uh, – before, like, he had, like – uh, multiple injuries and things of that sort. Uh, he was just a player who could do it all. Um, but yeah, like recently, like people say, like Brandon Ingram, uh, Kevin Durant, you know, why are we, uh, like skinny wings like that? Uh, they say, like, they see that in my game. Uh, so yeah, I'll just keep on working. I can see Tracy McGrady and Penny Hardaway because y'all both, all three of y'all have the same. Sim- a similar build. Similar build, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You probably don't jump as high as Tracy McGrady, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a vertical on him. Yes, sir. Yes, he has a bunnies, buddy. He has a bunnies. All right, all right. So what do we look forward to next season, man? What you If you if you could put up the numbers, what like what's your idea of numbers to put up next season? Uh... I'm big on I'm well actually actually no nah, I'm not I'm not really big on goals uh you know I just take it like a day at a time uh, I feel like it's like it's a never get too I never get too low mentality for me uh but you know I just want to I just want to improve on from like what I did last year uh like I said I was dealing with injuries and things of that sort uh so as long as my I'm more like efficient and more productive than last year uh, I'm cool I'm cool with it Take it. Take it. All right. So one more question. What's your? Oh, my bad. My bad. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, what do you think your biggest strength in your game is, and what do you think your biggest weaknesses? Right. Um. I think my biggest strength, uh, is my ability to score the ball. Uh, and also, like, I feel like I'm an underrated like playmaker. Uh, you know. When you like score the ball like so so well, like people like they tend to like overlook that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, and definitely, I just I just want to improve, really on, like the defense side of the ball, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, that's where that's what matters. Uh, being able to you know like limit a player's like ability to score, score yeah. uh, it makes you it makes your value. <laughs> Yeah, it makes your value go up. Uh, so, you know, I've been looking to improve that. And just like my conditioning level, uh, making sure that I'm in, in tip-top shape. 
Um, and yeah, just uh being able to be you know available uh and become more of a vocal leader too. That's awesome. That's what's up. You got a question, Teresa? I did. I was um I was gonna ask. So, what does your typical day during the season look like? You know, I figured people would like to know what does an NBA player do during the season? Right. Uh, <clears throat> for me, on days where I didn't have a game, we will usually have practice. Uh, so we will usually have practice at like 11. I go in and practice. Um, and we have like hot tubs and like, uh, you know, cold tubs and masseuses and things of that sort. Uh, so I go in, I lift weights, then we have like the actual team practice. Uh, and then after that, you know, you're pretty much free to do like whatever it is. Uh, and I would go in, like go in like 10 minutes in a hot tub, 10 minutes in the cold, and then like try to get get a massage in. Uh, and then after that, I, you know, come back to the house, uh, and, you know, like take my downtime. Uh, but on days where we have a game, um, like we gotta we gotta go in for like a workout at like like eleven. Uh, we'll do like a a pregame workout. Um, then we can go back home, take a nap, eat. Uh, and then we gotta go back to the gym for like a shoot around. That's where we like watch film on the other team. Uh, you know, go through their sets. Uh, so, you know, we're prepared. Uh, and then we go back to the locker room for a bit. And I try to get, like, some more food in me. Uh, we got, like, chefs there. And I get, like, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, like, before the game or whatever. Uh, and then after that, I got another uh, pregame workout, like, the actual pregame workout, uh, one-on-one with my, um, my trainer. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's game time. Man, so you eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for the game? That's nothing like it, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's not. It's but it's not like like an uncrustable peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like everything, <laughs> everything is like you know, it's like organic and like good for the body. Right, I, got I got you. Have you always <laughs> eaten that before games? Oh yeah, uh, I'll eat that, and then like they had like. Chicken and rice. Uh, so I give me one of those like chicken and rice bowls. Uh, and eat that. So, how's the food in the, in the facility though? Oh, uh, it's good. Um, like they got like our like our body fat and all that stuff. Uh, so you know they make foods that you know tailor to the players. Uh, gotcha. and everything like I said, everything is healthy. Uh, everything is organic. Uh, so you know you can't you can't really go wrong with what you choose to eat. Uh, and for me, I feel like that's big uh, because, like in high school, you can just go out and play, go home, uh, no stretching, no nothing. Uh, you know, eat Bojangles cookout or whatever the case may be. Uh, <clears throat> but it sets your body back uh, in the long run and long view of things. Uh, so focusing on what I consuming to my body was definitely a big eye opener for me. Uh, so, you know, whether that's, you know, drinking a gallon of water each day um, or trying to eat greens every now and then, uh, you know, that's, that'll take your body a long way. So, go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah. go ahead. Well, I was going to do they have like a personal nutrition plan for you or do they just provide like healthy options that you get to choose from? Uh, yeah, they 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 provide like during the season, uh they provided like healthy options uh for you know everybody. Uh it was like pretty much like a like a buffet or whatever. Uh but in the morning, like you can request like what you want for breakfast. Like every morning I get uh pancakes and eggs. Uh you know, I feel like that's <laughs> that's the best way to start the day right there. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, uh every every morning I go in, I I'll get that. Um, but like, since I've been here in the off season, uh, you know, they use this time to, you know, if a player needs to gain weight 
to to do so. Um, yeah, to uh, like if a player needs to gain weight, they use this time to do so. Um, being that you know, it's more downtime in the off season, uh, and like you can lift heavier weights and things of that sort, and not have to worry about you know going out and playing a game because if you lift heavy weights and play a game, like you won't. Yeah. Had the best outcome, yeah. So uh, they use the off season for you know, like nutrition plans and things of that sort. Yeah, so, yeah. so the, the, what was the so like an off season? Now you guys are just work. You said you're working out, and like, what do you do in the off season? Like, you, do you travel? Do you go home and see your folks? Do you what do you, what do you what, like? What what does Josh Hall do in his downtime when he's not working out or in the facility? Oh uh, right. Uh, well, after the season, I went home and, you know, I spent time with my my parents, uh, being that they haven't seen me in a while. Um, and then I was home for two weeks and then I came out here and I trained. Uh, and, you know, I could have went anywhere else, but I decided to stay here. In uh, Oklahoma City. Yes, sir. Um, I, I just like it out here. Uh, like, I like it a lot. Uh, the people who, you know, I see on a everyday basis, uh, you know, and just being able to work out. Um, and because, like, if I was home, I'd probably work out, like, every now and then. But, like, you know, it's motivation to work out here. Uh, yeah. Like, when I'm home, I can chill in my room. And majority of the time, like, I like to work out at night uh, because, like, Sleep is like sometimes I stay up uh late, uh so and I'll be bored. So I'll be like, I might as well just go to the gym right now, uh spend my time doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh but at home, like I can't really do that because like all the gyms they close at a certain time. Right. Um <clears throat> but since I've been here, yeah, uh I don't I don't really do a lot. Uh you you should know you should know that though. I don't really do a lot. Uh, yeah, I know. so wait, <laughs> one question. You got your driver's license yet? I did. I did. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool. So hey, I'm getting your business now, man. I'm getting your business. Oh, no. Nah, you good. You good. You good. What what, you good. what kind of car did you buy? I know you bought a nice whip. Uh, I didn't buy a car, actually. Uh, Get out of here. Yeah, nah. I, I, I haven't bought a car yet. Uh, I'm waiting um, to really, like, decide on, like, what I really want. Okay. Uh, so, so far, you know, I, I ran it out um, – a charger, uh, you know, don't really cost a lot. Um, yeah. and you know, it gets me from A to B, so I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm the best you got your driver's license, man. Like, shoot, I ain't know what to say. <laughs> Look, I would get a hey, true story, man. This, this is the funniest story. Like, I would, I don't ride in my daughter's car often because I don't she drives real fast. So, I when you get in your car, man, like the seat's all the way in the back seat. I'm like, yo, what giant was sitting here? She was like, I had driver's license. <laughs> And I'd be like, golly. Yeah, but that's my Josh Hall story. But yeah, man. So, so like, what's the, um, I'm gonna steal Michael's line again. So tell me. Ooh, yeah. Make this a regular thing, huh? Yeah, just, 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 Jason Mike's line. Yeah, so Jason Mike's line. That's the line every, now. Uh, I'm, stealing, I'm stealing Michael's line, Josh. <laughs> so, like, every, every episode, man, we have our, uh, our guests to give our, our viewers. A, a little nugget or something they can hang their hat on, man. So give the viewers something, a little nugget from Josh Hall they can hang their hat on this week. Um, <coughs> oh, you going to put me on the spot like that. I uh, got to, man. I really, got to. Really, I just say uh, keep, like, continue to pray, like, no matter what you're going through. Um, this is like this is like a tough year for me, uh, you know. So when I was like when I was hurt, uh, like I said, I didn't really deal with those injuries. Uh, like I like questioned like my faith a little bit, um, and like I feel like you know if I did it, there's somebody out here who's done it. Um, but I was getting a massage. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> I was talking to my masseuse or whatever, and, you know, she was, she just looked at me and she was like, um, 
something in my heart is telling me that, like, you need to hear this right now. Um, and like, I looked at her like she was crazy. Uh, you know, cause I was like, what, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, and she was just like, you know, um, God is with you. Um, and you know, he like, he's, he's standing with you and, you know, like he really cares for you. Uh, just keep him first. Uh, and, you know, continue to pray. Um, and so after that, uh, like after she said that, <coughs> I asked her, uh, like when, like, when, when did you like, like, when did you become like such a like firm believer and heavy believer in God? Uh, and she said, um, because I was like, you know, like, yeah, I've gotten like this far in my life. Uh, and you know, there's an obvious reason for that. Um, whether it's hard work, uh, and I, I choose to believe that it is God. Um, <clears throat> and like he put me in this position for a reason, uh, to impact others, whether it's on the court, off the court or whatever it is I do. Um, and I was like, but like, I, like I, I can't, I can't see him. Uh, and she was like, <clears throat> she said to me, um, you can, you can breathe. Right. And I was like, yeah. And then she was like, well, can you, can you see the air that you breathe? Mm. And then I was like, I was like, no. Uh, and she was just like, uh, that's, that's all you need to know right there. Um, <clears throat> and then I was like, um, what, like, when was the, like the firm moment you like started to believe in him? Um, and she was like, she's from, Los Angeles. she's from California, I think. And, she she was driving to go somewhere else, but like her car got stuck in Oklahoma, and you know she took that as a like as a warning, um, as like you know God saying this is where you need to be in your life, uh, and she's been here ever since. Wow. <laughs> um, and like her moment, uh, where like her car broke down and she was in Oklahoma, uh, I feel like that's the same moment, um. It was for me, like her talking to me uh, that day, mm -hmm. uh, because I was I was having a rough day, uh, and she didn't even know, uh, you know. So after that, like I started like before like games and things of that sort. Like this happened like towards the end of the year. Uh, I would listen to like gospel music, uh, and I would listen to you know scriptures of the Bible, um, and you know it, it helped me out a lot, uh, and you know. I just encourage to the people, you know, to constantly pray uh, whether things are going good, uh, whether things are going bad. Uh, you know, it only takes a few minutes, uh, whether it's, you know, when you're winding down at night or when you wake up in the morning. Uh, and, you know, you never know what somebody's going through on a day to day basis. So uh, just treat everybody with respect and love uh, and Anything that you set your mind to, for real, you can really achieve it. Uh, you know, there's so many, so many tools in this world now uh, with social media uh, to get your platform or whatever you uh, want to do uh, out there into the world for them to see uh, and just have fun with whatever you choose to do. Uh, that's the, that's the most important thing because uh, when you leave, when you leave it, when you leave Earth, uh, you don't want to leave Earth looking back on you know. Uh, all the bad times that you had or thinking, hey, I could have I could have had a more positive outlook on life. Uh, it would have got me further. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I just leave to the people listening. Dig it. Dig it. Yeah, very Thank well said. Appreciate that. Yeah, well man. Said. That's yeah. All right, brother. That's what's up. That's what's up. Thank you. you came to North Carolina, man. You didn't come visit. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> it comes uh, story. When I, when I came to North Carolina, uh, I had to I had to drive back and forth to Winston, uh, oh, like okay. to get workouts in. But like I'm gonna be back. But well, that's I where I work. Week. So oh, <laughs> 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be back uh, in North Carolina at the end of at the end of August. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure to stop by. Okay, all right. You, look, you work out with Harry Giles' dad. Say it again. Mm. Oh, okay. He he well, comes work, by I my work. rec center all the time, and all he talks about was that ninety million dollars. <laughs> 
that his son messed up, and that's all we hear about. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I work out with his trainer though. I work okay. out with his trainer. Yeah. All right, all right. Look, man. You're in Seattle, you know. Keep me up. I got you. I got you. We don't want to leave out, Mike. My bad. My bad. Yeah, I left me out. But sorry, man. That's all right, man. My bad. My bad, man. So, hey, look, Josh, I really appreciate you coming on, man. It's been a big – I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a big, big moment having you on the show. Uh, I was yes. looking forward to it when, when Daisha told me to, to hit you up. So I was like, man, we're we going to have an NBA basketball player on the, on the, on the, uh, on the podcast? Yeah, yeah, it's dope. It's super dope. Yes, man. thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to let uh, – we're going to let Mike take us out of here because I'm not doing the, the exit. Oh. It's all on you, brother. All right, man. Well, if this is your first time tuning in, please like, subscribe, and continue to follow us on this journey. If you've already been following us, please continue to because we got a lot of great episodes coming on. Um, we're Dreams Reality, a nonprofit organization geared toward uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. I'm your host, Michael Davis, alongside Jason Redman and Sharice Lovett. <clears throat> I'd like to thank our guest, Josh Hall, for coming on, man. He's a young man with a bright future in the NBA. Yes. Watch out for him because he's putting up buckets next year. All day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And remember, our goal is not to be better than anybody, but together we can achieve better for everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Peace. Right. Thank you.